We're going to take a look in this video at dividing decimals. Now, if you have really ugly decimals, you're probably going to use a calculator to divide them. But for simple decimals, it is important to, to know and have an idea of that skill. So if we take a look, if we take a look at sort of a simple one, just to get the idea and the process. If we take 7.8 and we want to divide it by 4, then we really have to use long division. And when we use long division, whatever, remember, 7.8 divided by 4 is really 7.8 over 4. So we're dividing 4 into 7.8. So 4 into, and I'm just going to use a long division symbol here, that's what this is, uh, into 7.8. And oftentimes when we divide, we like to throw in some decimal places and placeholders after just in case we need them. So now, the first step here is we look at the 7 and the 4. How many times does 4 go into 7 evenly? So you can see that 4 goes into 7, 4 goes into 7 evenly only once. Now, this is the trick. When you're doing long division, your next line here, what we have to do is we multiply the 1 here by the 4, and then we write it underneath. We draw a line, and we subtract. 7 minus 4 is 3. And now what we do is we carry down the next number to the right. So now we carry down the 8 and get 38. And now we have to see how many whole times does 4 go into 38. And we obviously know it's going to be less than 10. Uh, 4 times 8 is 32. 4 times 9 is 36. So we have to remember when we do our long division, if the decimal point is here, we write the decimal point directly above on top here. And this is going to be our answer in the end. So back to this, we know that 4 goes into 38 nine whole times with some remainder. So we put the 9 up there. And now what we do is we multiply the same process as the first time. We multiply the 9 by the 4, and we write our result underneath the 38. So 9 times 4 is 36, and then we subtract. 38 minus 36 is 2, and after we subtract, again, the same process as we did with those first numbers. Now we carry down another 0. You would carry down whatever digit is there, uh, but in this case, it's a 0. And so now, how many times does 4 go into 20? Well, 4 goes into 20 five times. And now we repeat again the same process. I'll do this one in green. We multiply the 5 by the 4. 5 times 4 is 20. And we write the result underneath where we just finished. And now we subtract, and once we finally get a result of 0, this is our remainder, and our division is done. So we have, really, that 7.8 divided by 4 is equal to 1.95. The process for doing long division, or dividing decimals, is just long division, and it's this whole process repeated. You see how many whole times the one number goes into the next. Write the result up top, like I did the one. Multiply your result by the number in front, right, your divisor. And then write that result underneath. Subtract, carry down and perform the whole process again. 
Let's take a look at one that's a little bit more complicated. Let's take something like 20.52 divided by 2.5. And there's another little trick that we're going to have to uh, go over here. So the first thing we do is write out our long division, write out our long division this way. So we put the 2.5 out front, and now we have 20.52. We can add some zeros as placeholders just in case we need them, and we make sure that our decimal is written right above here. Now the problem is we've got a decimal over here, and when we're dividing by a decimal, the easiest thing to do is to sort of, well, I guess you kick this decimal over by one spot, and if you kick this decimal over by one spot, that'll move it to a number with no decimals, which is 25. But if we do that here, then we've also got to do it here. So instead of writing 2.5 into 20.52, we can say that that really will be the same as 25 into 205.2. So when you have a decimal, when you're dividing by a decimal, move the decimal place over so that it's a whole number, and then move the decimal point in what you're dividing into over by the same. And so now we can do the same process as we did in the first example. So now we know that 25 doesn't go into 2 and 25 doesn't go into 20. And so now we want to see how many whole times does 25 go into 205. And we know that 25 times 4 is 100. So 24 times 8 would be 200. So that's going to be 8. And it might take you a while to get those uh, numbers. But once you do, uh, the process is always the same. So now, let's repeat the same process that we did in the first example. We know that 25 goes into 205 eight whole times, and then some left over. So now, we multiply the 8 by the 25, and we write our result underneath here. 8 times 25, 8 times 5 is 40, 2 times 8 is 16, 16 plus 4 is 20. So 8 times 25 is 200. We draw our line and now we subtract. 5 minus 0 is 5, 0 minus 0, and we're done. And now we bring down the next digit, which in this case is the 2. And now we have to determine how many whole times does 25 go into 52. And 25 times 2 is 50, so that's pretty close. And so here we write a 2. And now I'll do this one in red. We follow the same procedure now. We multiply. 2 times 25 is 50. And now we write that result underneath Then we draw our line, and we subtract. 52 minus 50 is 2. And now we bring down our next digit. Now, how many times does 25 go into 20? Well, it doesn't, right? Because if this number, if this number is smaller than this number, really, you're going to have a 0 here because 25 doesn't go any number of whole times into 20. So all we do is insert a 0, and then we bring down the next number. And now how many whole times does 25 go into 200? Well, 25 goes into 100 four times, so 25 must go into 200 eight times. And now getting a little messy here, but now we multiply, and 8 times 25 is 200, 
and we write our result down here and then we subtract and we see here that we've got a zero remainder. Usually we put our uh, remainder, you can mark it with an R, put parentheses like brackets around it. Uh, and so here's our result. Our original question was 20.52 divided by 2.5 and 20.52 divided by 2.5 is 8.208. Now let's take a look at the a final example here and this is going to be a rather long one uh, but I think it's worthwhile just to make sure you get the process. And we're not going to use big numbers. I'm going to divide 12.7 divided by 3.2. So remember the first step here, instead of writing 3.2 divided into 12.7, we're going to represent that as 32, kicking that decimal over, kicking this one over as well, 32 divided into 127.000. .000 and we're going to write it like that. So 32 into 127.0000. And now we start off, oh, better write our decimal point up here. So now we start off, how many times does 32 go into 127? 32 goes into 127, a little bit less than 4, and it's going to be 3. And so then what we have to do is we have to then multiply by the number out front and then write our result underneath. Then subtract and then carry our next decimal down and repeat the whole process over again. So 32 times 3, 32 times 3, I'm just doing some rough work here, is going to be 2 times 3 is 6, and 3 times 3 is 9, so we're going to get 96. And notice here, you're going to have to use all of your skills in adding and subtracting decimals in order to divide, because now we've got to subtract these two. 7 minus 6 is 1. Oh, 2 minus 9, can't do it, because it's, well, turn out to be a negative, so therefore we have to borrow from the next column over and we get 12 minus 9 is 3. And now we bring down the next digit and 32, how many times does 32 go evenly into 310? Well, you know that 32 times 10 would be 320, so it's going to be one less than that. And now we do our multiplication. 9 times 32. 9 times 32 is equal to 288, and you can do that on scrap paper if you wish. 9 times 32 is 288, so we write that result underneath. And now we subtract. Oh, 0 minus 8. Can't do it, so we need to borrow from the next column. 10 minus 8 is 2. And now we've got 0 in this column. 0 minus 8 we can't do, so now we have to borrow from this column. The 3 becomes a 2, and the 0 becomes a 10. 10 minus 8 is 2. And now we bring down our next digit. And 220, how many times does 32 go evenly into 220? Uh, we have could be around 7. It's probably less than 7. And you'll know if you got the right number uh, because it's going to be uh, pretty close to 220. And so it's going to be a little bit less than 7, and it's going to be 6. So now we perform the same process again, 
I'll do the arrows one more time. Six, six times 32, six times 32, two times six is 12, carry the one. Three times six is 18, plus one is 19, so we get 192. And now we subtract, zero minus two, we can't do it. So we change that two to a one, and we borrow 10 from that column. Now 10 minus 2 is 8. 1 minus 9, we can't do. Uh, so we borrow from the next column over. The 2 becomes a 1. The 2 becomes a 1. And the 1 becomes an 11. And now 11 minus 9 is 2. And so now we carry our next, we carry our next digit down, and we get 280. And so we need to know how many times does 32 go into 280, and we know it's going to be bigger than 6, because 6 was 220, and it's going to be less than 9, because that was what we had in this line at 310, and it turns out that it's going to be 8. And now 8 times 32, I'm going to speed this up a bit and just do the math in my head. 8 times 32 is 256. And so 256, and now I subtract. And 280 minus 256 uh, is going to leave me with 24. And you can check that subtraction. Again, I'm just trying to speed things up a little bit here. And so now we need to bring down our next zero. And I'm going to try something quickly here. No, that's not going to work. I'll just have to leave it like that. So uh, I'm just going to have to go from top to bottom, that's all. Uh, so now I have... Uh, 24 and 8 times 32, right, was 256. 250, 280 minus 256 is 24. And now I bring down my 0. And I'm going to go to black now. Um, now I need to multiply uh, 8 times 32. No, I need to figure out how many times 32 goes into 240. And it went into, it went into 220 nine times. Uh, so let's try 7. And 7 times 32, 7 times 32 is 224. Again, I'm multiplying 7 by 32 writing my result below, and then subtracting. And two, 240 minus 224 is equal to 16. And now I bring down, I'm going to have to add another zero here. Almost done. And now, how many times does 32 go into 160? Well, we know 320 is 10, so it's going to be around 5, and in fact, it's exactly 5. And so we do our last multiplication here, 5 times 32, and 5 times 32 is indeed 160, and now we write our result underneath, and then we get a remainder of 0. And the reason why I've done a long one like that at the end is just to show you that it's the same process repeated over and over and over again. The tricky thing is to come up with these numbers. But most of the time, when you are uh, dividing decimals and ugly decimals, you're going to have uh, probably a calculator to do it. But the skill of long division is still important. Uh, so I hope that gives you a better understanding of how to, multi uh, pardon me, how to divide uh, decimals.